Kit Kats, and we're gonna teach you how to get the most out of a lecture. <laughs> okay, there's some strategies you can incorporate to make sure you get the most out of your lecture. There are some things you can do before class. The first, and maybe the most important, is to check the syllabus before class to see what you're learning that day. Okay, so today we're going over chapter three. So now I know that what we're doing in class today, I can use that to see the bigger picture and what, I'm, what, what we're learning today fits into the grand scheme of the course. Another thing you can do to be ready before class is to make sure you get to class early so you can review your previous notes from the previous classes. All right. Reviewing your notes from previous classes improves your ability to take accurate and complete notes and helps you to understand the context, make connections, and have deeper learning of the material. It allows you time to, to connect the knowledge from previous classes to the new information that you'll be learning today. Another important thing is to choose your seat wisely. You want to choose a seat that's going to maximize your attention and minimize your distractions. So if you have a bunch of friends in that class, you don't want to step beside them if you know you're going to talk to them. Another important thing is good posture. You want to have a posture that keeps you alert, especially in early morning and late night classes. Here's some examples of how not to sit in class. Here's what to do during the actual lecture. The first thing you need to do is take your own notes. Students who take notes during lectures have been found to achieve higher grades than those who just listen. You also need to be selective in your note taking. If your professor writes it down, then you definitely need to write it down too because it's probably important. You need to pay extra attention at the beginning and the end of class for information about the upcoming test. And also you should probably learn the verbal and nonverbal cues that a professor can give. Some examples of verbal cues are when a professor uses phrases that signal out important information such as the point here is or what's most significant about this is. Another important verbal cue is when information is repeated or rephrased re in a different way. So when the professor says, in other words, and also if a professor says at the end of a, a sentence, is that clear? Do you follow that? That means that he really wants to know if you understand so he can make sure that he explains it better. Um, another important cue is the tone of voice. Information that is delivered in a louder tone or at a higher pitch than usual may indicate that it's important. Uh, Nonverbal cues are also, are, can be seen in facial expressions and body movement. And it's important to understand all these verbal and nonverbal cues. When you're in class, you should always try to take organized notes by using bullet points or a paragraph form or categorizing things as much as you can. While you're taking notes, if they're not as organized as you would like them to be, you can always go back after class and rewrite them if necessary. You should not stop taking notes if you don't understand something because you can always ask the professor later on what he meant by something if you don't understand. Mm -hmm. There's a couple strategies you can use after a lecture to maximize your attention. Check your notes as soon as class ends to make sure you don't have any big gaps or spaces where information is missing. You should also review your notes on a daily basis to make sure you're studying as much as you can. Your primary goal during lectures is to get important information into your brain long enough to note it mentally and then physically by recording it in your notes. Making sense of that information often has to come later when you have time to reflect on the notes you took in class that day. Here's some things not to do during a lecture. Oh, am I late? Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. College that enables you to view issues and solve problems from multiple angles or vantage points. Although you may. What is that? Hey, what's up? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Dude, I'm in class right now. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Oh my god, you got a flat tire? Yeah, do you need me... when do you need me to pick you up? Okay, well, I'm actually in class right now, so let me call you back. <laughs> One of the most emphasized intended outcomes of a liberal arts education is to know thyself. The ability to turn inward and become aware of yourself is a form of intelligence that has been referred to as interpersonal intelligence and is essential for beginning any quest for personal growth and self fulfillment. I just didn't get to watch the latest episode of Breaking Bad last night, and like, I really need to watch it during this class. So I was wondering if you could like take some notes and like you can just like text them to me, like email them to me. You got me? All right, thanks. Yeah, sure, sure. No problem. Here's an example of some bad notes. Doodles, completely unorganized. Good notes. Nice, structured. So I think the most, getting the most out of the lecture class when you come in uh, would be to print off the slides um, that are posted on Blackboard before you come in and use those slides to kind of take your notes and fill in points on the PowerPoints that I talk about. Um, and then use those slides as your kind of study guide, you know, when you go back and you're, and you're studying for the